Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. It's an exciting day to be a Zombies fan because there is so much new Zombies info that has just released on the Treyarch blog. Like, so much info. We're listening to the new Zombies theme right now. It's about to go into the bit that sounds like Damned. There it is. Oh man, so exciting. Okay, so they're starting us off. Okay, with perks and skill tiers, which already is huge, okay? Especially seeing as I literally put out a video yesterday talking about exactly this sort of stuff, like a podcast thing with Noah. So, let's take a look at perks, specifically one that you'll be able to collect and utilize at launch and how they work, and for the first time in Zombies history, how to upgrade them. Notice they say utilize at launch. More perks coming as DLC. Fingers crossed. On launch, we'll have six different perks to crack open. Jug, Quick, Speed, Stamina Up, Deadshot, and an all-new perk, Elemental Pop. We've seen this in the trailer. We already know that it gives us some kind of alternate ammo type usage. Let's find out more. Jug gives you increased max health by 50, which is probably only one hit. Thinking about it, if you think about the Black Ops 3 system of health, sorry, Black Ops 4, we had 150 health, and then we would get bonus health with our jug, but this seems to be just one single 50, one single third, i.e. one hit, right? Unless they're changing the numbers around, but I feel like that they would clarify that if they were changing the numbers, because then giving us the 50 is pointless. They would only say 50 if that was the 50 that we were used to from the previous system, and the fact that it's that, just one hit, is weird. They're going to have to explain. They're going to have to explain. Quick, reduce the time it takes to regen to full health by 50%. Ah, so you regen a lot faster. Okay, reduce the time it takes to revive an ally by 50%. Okay, so it's fast revive and you regen quicker. So it's blending the old system and the new system that they introduced in BO4 for quick revive. Speed, real speed, only 15%. Okay, that seems underpowered to me. Increase run and sprint speed. Good. Deadshot, aim and down sights, moves to enemy critical location. Remove scope sway. Okay, so the fact that it goes to enemy critical location is really good because obviously if you've got a zombie that is weak on its elbows, for example, then you don't want to be aiming at its head. So that's good. And then to pop, every bullet has a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. A random one. I was under the impression that you would be able to choose which one. So that's really interesting, that's how that works. While Zombies veterans will be familiar with the initial versions of most of the starting perks, Elemental Pop's different. This new perk is all about ammo mods. With every shot fired while Elemental Pop is active, you'll have a slight chance for a random base ammo mod to take effect against your target. Incredibly useful. But what happens when you want to take your perks to the next level? That's where our new skill tiers come in! It sounds like a skill tree! Ooh, I've been going on about this. I've been banging on about this for so long now. Every perk can be permanently upgraded up to three levels. Yes, you heard that right. Permanently! Let's go! Okay. To upgrade your perks, you'll need to earn raw ethereum crystals. Okay, so that's something that was talked about in some leaks recently. By reaching milestone rounds within the game or through successful exfiltration. What's more, you'll be able to upgrade skills related to field upgrades, ammo mods, and weapon classes to help you stay alive even longer as you collect and invest more ethereum crystals. Over time, you'll use these crystals to improve the tools in your arsenal, improving their damage and utility to help you reach higher rounds. Good stuff. Okay. Let's see, as an example, elementing, sorry, upgrading the elemental pop perk to tier 3 will grant the following effects. Tier 1, equipment damage also has a chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. That's what we already knew. Tier 2, ammo mod cooldowns reduced by 20%. That's crazy powerful. That's crazy powerful. Tier 3, when a random ammo mod is applied, it uses your current skill tier instead of the base. When a random ammo mod is applied, it uses your current skill tier instead of the base. So does that mean that we're going to be upgrading the skill tiers of the ammo mods themselves as well? Are we going to get, like, Blast Furnace 2? Blast Furnace 3? We'll be introducing more perks throughout our post-launch seasons! Yeah! No guesses! Alright, alright, no guesses, dude. No guesses. Bring back double tap. <laughs> okay, weapon rarities. They're, t they're talking about this? That's good news. Perks are essential, but let's be honest, survival and zombies is all about the weapons. In previous iterations, too many zombie players will have trying to figure out which weapons were the top tier. Well, that's that's a good thing, trying to figure out what's the top tier. Based on their wall by prices. Oh, okay, okay, fair, fair, fair. I'm with you, Trey. I'll come with you. All by rolling them from the mystery box and hoping for the best. This time around, our new weapon rarity system gives every weapon a path to greatness. Every weapon. Here's how. Weapons come in five tiers. Or oh, common, low, okay, common or loadout. 
interesting clarification. Interesting clarification. They are specifying if you're spawning in with like your sick Warzone loadout, it is still going to be in this tier. The base tier, the bottom tier for damage, it's not going to be any of these. So you're not going to be able to instantly waltz into being set up from round one. That's good. That is a good thing. Uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Each tier increases the damage done by these weapons and will also determine how many randomized attachments will come along for the fight. Randomized attachments. Okay. For example, an uncommon weapon, that's like, if that's tier zero, then that's tier one. But let's call it tier two, okay? Uh, tier two will feature around a 50% damage boost over its loadout version. Oh! And comes with just two attachments, while the legendary version kits that up to roughly 300% damage and comes stacked with eight attachments. Wow. So what I'm curious about, Treyarch, it would be amazing if you could clarify this. Are the attachments purely what is providing that damage buff? Or are you literally buffing the base damage of the bullet coming out of the weapon just by virtue of its, of its uh, uh, rarity level? Because I'm assuming it's the latter. But it would be interesting if they're doing some other kind of hijinks in there. How does it affect wall bites? Good question. Doesn't it make the new system make those less effective? Great questions. Fear not. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Weapon rarities make wall buys and the mystery box even more worthwhile. Buying your favorite weapon off the wall is now different every time with random attachments thrown into the mix. And the mystery box actually increases its odds of rolling high rarity weapons as the rounds get higher. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm with you on that. This creates a new layer of strategy to keep in mind as the match goes on. What happens if you hit the jackpot on your first spin in the mystery box and get an epic magnum at round 10 and then roll an uncommon AK-74 for you on your very next spin? Let's just say you're more comfortable with SMGs, but you know your damage potential will become lower as a result of switching. Which one do you keep? Wow. Wow, I'm liking the fact that they here are not giving the player a straight answer. They are not giving the player a straight answer. They are not saying, hey, player, if you get an AK-74 out of the box and you've got like what would be normally considered a bad pistol, then the AK-74 you, where previously it might have been the obvious choice, will no longer be the obvious choice. That's good. They are making us make tough decisions. That is a good thing for gameplay. A really good thing for gameplay. If you found a strong weapon in the mystery box previously, you had very little motivation to return. True. Now, even if you roll a weapon that you're happy with early in the game, you can return 10 rounds later and try and roll the legendary version. Wait, wow. So is that incentivizing you to keep your weapon for 10 rounds? Or is that just saying you could get it 10 rounds later because you'll have a higher chance 10 rounds later because you'll be later in the game 10 rounds later? Interesting wording. The box also now includes support items such as the sentry turret and war machine. <laughs> war machine in the box, goddamn. To quote lead systems designer Kevin Drew. I've been playing zombies for 10 years. Hell yeah, we love to hear that. This is the most excited I've ever been while opening this mystery box. I'm saluting as fast as I can. Oh my god. That's such good news. If that's, I mean, obviously it's marketing, right? It's marketing, but like... Still, that's so exciting. Okay, 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 okay. <sighs> Deep breaths. Custom loadouts. We're bringing everything together to unify progression across multiplayer and zombies in Black Ops Cold War. This was the team's first chance to fully deliver custom loadouts in zombies. First and foremost, empowering players to bring all of their unlocked weapons and cosmetics into... Oh, they're bringing cosmetics in as well from Warzone? Okay, good. That's a good thing. Zombies takes the action up a notch and gets everyone into higher rounds faster. Ooh, this gives players more freedom to play their way, especially for those who want to get the better feel for how much fun zombies can be after the first few rounds. Yes, bring in new players, grow the zombies community. I literally have a mark on my head from where I was saluting my boy. Loadouts don't change the classic zombies formula as much as you might think. People were worried about that, so I'm glad they're addressing it. That's good. That is direct response. That, that, that is written as a direct response, I feel like, to the fact that people were worried when they did the first reveal. So that's really good that they've actually taken that on board and directly addressed it. If starting out with a 1911 is your jam, go for it. See? That is... I... I... I cannot stress enough how good it is to see a reveal from Treyarch and then to see the community's response and then in the next point of contact from Treyarch, the next release, they directly react to the community's reaction. And they say this. They say this. That's that's so good. That is actually so good. I cannot stress that enough. That is so good. The design team carefully considered how loadouts would affect weapon progression gameplay and such. Oh, sorry. And as such, loadouts and zombies are simplified compared to those in multiplayer. They're simplified. What does that mean? You can only bring in a single weapon and field upgrade with your zombies loadout. Okay. 
Furthermore, that single weapon will have its attachment and cosmetics, but it will be the lowest rarity available common. This means your starting weapon won't be very effective at killing zombies after a handful of early rounds, so you'll still need to get out there and find other weapons quickly. You can also upgrade the rarity of your loadout weapon in-game, so you can keep your customized loadout weapon into higher rounds if that's more your style. They need to talk about that. They need to talk about that. You can upgrade the rarity of your loadout weapon in-game. Is that pack a punching or is that something else? Let's keep going. We're, we're not even halfway. This is so sick. There's so much zombies news here. Field upgrades. Entirely different from those found in multiplayer and for good reason, these are tools designed to fit the narrative of Black Ops Cold War's dark ether story and provide a welcome power spike as part of the core combat loop without making players OP in the process. Okay. A power spike built into the game? Good. Yes. Without making the players OP? Also good. I need to see it in practice. I need to, I need to experience these things, I feel like. Available at launch, so they're going to probably be doing more. Frost blast. Oh, oh, let's just, let's just, let's just, let's, let, let's really take these in. Really, let's really take this in. Frost blast. Create a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it. Slowed enemies take additional damage. So that's like a winter's whale, it sounds like. It sounds good. Healing aura. Summon beams of energy down on yourself and applies to instantly, sorry, and allies to instantly heal to full health. Wow. So if your teammate gets stuck in a corner, bwah, heal. Energy mine. Create a mine of pure energy that detonates on proximity of enemies dealing explosive damage. Okay, basic. Ring of fire. Create a ring of ethereal fire that boosts damage for your allies and you. Normal enemies who enter gain a burning effect that deals fire damage and it lasts 15 seconds. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. A ring of fire that boosts damage for you and your allies? Boys, boys. I I I'm sorry, but wrong controller. Wrong co This is it. Th we destiny now. We actually destiny now. We're creating a ring on the ground. And in that ring on the ground, our damage is buffed. If we've got a teammate, there's healing aura. Instantly healing the team to full health. Instantly buffing the damage of the team. The ring of fire lasts 15 seconds. How good is that going to be for, for, for damage phases on bosses? That's a big question. That's going to transform boss fights. Ether Shroud. Phase into the dark ether for five seconds, becoming hidden from enemy detection. Ooh! So that's what we saw in the trailer. That's what we saw in the trailer. The design of the upgrades takes inspiration from several action-based abilities in previous Zombies games, including certain gobblegums, elixirs, and even some non-passive perks. Each one is balanced with an appropriate number of zombie kills required to charge it. For example, Healing Aura has the upgraded ability to revive players in the map remotely. <gasps> but requires double the kills to charge than an offensive-based field upgrade such as Energy Mine. That's good. That's good. Custom balancing is a good thing. When you load into a match, you're going to want to have one of the field upgrades unlocked in your custom loadout and ready to charge up. Coordinate with the rest of your team before a match to make sure you've got a good balance on offensive, defensive, and support field upgrades to help ensure... Sorry, to help everyone survive as long as possible. This is good. This is all good. Armor and salvage. Replacing the crafted... Replacing the crafted shield? I didn't... I didn't think they were going to do that. I didn't... Let's keep reading. Armor provides a 360 degree layer of protection. Armor can be found as a rare drop from enemies or purchased using salvage, which we saw in the trailer. When worn, it will mitigate a portion of incoming damage. Every hit will still deal damage, but its durability is limited. So it's only mitigating a portion of damage, which is weird. That's going to be much more confusing, I feel like. I'm not sure if I like that, but again, too early to say. Armor is partially repaired by picking up the occasional armor shard dropped from certain enemies. It's a finite resource and you'll find yourself vulnerable again once you run out of salvage to repair it. You can also fully repair armor by picking up a carpenter power-up. Good. Armor can also be upgraded to additional levels, increasing its damage mitigation and durability. You're going to need it as rounds progress because zombies grow strong.
Say it ain't so. Say it ain't. Am I, am I, am I, am I reading this right? Like, like, huh? What? Zombies, zombies get, zombies grow stronger every round. And they're talking about armor. They're talking about the damage a player takes. A zombie's just gonna schwack you around around 50 now. You just die. Like, if that's what they're saying, personally, well, I haven't played it yet, again, so I'll give it a chance, of course, but personally, just from reading it, not a fan. At all. Not a fan. <laughs> Cannot stress enough. How much I don't want that to happen, but I'm ready to be surprised, Treyarch. I'll give it a chance, of course. But I do not like the idea of zombies just, just insta-downing you at round 50 or round 70 or whatever. That sounds rough. Even when paired with an upgraded jug, no amount of armor can save you if you find yourself overrun, especially as rounds get higher and the challenge increases. Well, that's, 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 that's understandable. That's, oh, spooky stuff. Okay. Score streaks. We've wanted to bring score streaks to zombies for a long time, and now that player progression is unified across modes, there's never been a better opportunity. While certain zombies maps have included some variants of these in the past, the new Dark Ether narrative offered the perfect chance to finally carry over some of the militarized versions into zombies to raise the stakes even higher. Sometimes you just need a little extra firepower. Support comes into play. At launch, the available support selection, which is in the box, they said, contains combat bow, awful Lawton, Sentry turret, war machine, chopper gunner, and self revive. Okay, interesting. I didn't think self revives were gonna were gonna make a big appearance this year, but it sounds like they might do. Keep an eye out for one of those. Sorry, one of these to pop out of the mystery box if you're lucky. And for those curious about how calling in a chopper works without being instantly ripped to shreds by zombies, any support that takes perspective away from your character will temporarily make you immune to damage and ignored by em enemies while it's deployed. Solo players rejoice. This ensures that solo players are good as well. Damn, Treyarch, they've thought of it all, man. And there's more, dude. There's actually so much more. It pays to stay resourceful during an undead invasion. In Cold War Zombies, every zombie has a small chance of dropping resources, including salvage armor and even lethal and tactical equipment. The tougher the enemy, the better the loot. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. As you unlock equipment and score streaks through standard player progression, that content will also become available at the crafting table in-game. Wow! Through standard player progression, you get it at the crafting table and can be crafted using resources. Rarity is also assigned to loot based loot based on its effectiveness, so frag is, un con is considered uncommon, whereas the symbol monkey is rare. Okay, okay. Why die if you don't have to? With the new option to exfil, your squad can't last much longer. You can roll the dice to try and survive long enough to escape with some extra rewards, but it won't be easy. We do know a little bit about this already. Yeah! I read ahead. I read ahead. That's It's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. Starting at the end of round 10 and every round after, very five after, sorry, you'll have an option to use the radio in the starting area of the map to call an exfil. In co-op, a majority of the players must vote to initiate it. Once triggered, the normal round will end. You'll be given a new objective to reach the exfil within a specific time. At this point, zombies will begin to flood the area in a last ditch effort to stop your squad in its tracks. Once you reach the site, a heli will fly in, hover above you until the zone is cleared before it can land. If you manage to make it onto the chopper, you'll escape with some bonus XP and the chance to earn some raw ethereum crystals. Risk versus reward! Treyarch? You have learned the concept of risk versus reward? This makes me happy! This really makes me happy. I would love in future to mix in some other rewards for it rather than just these crystals because I feel like Zombies fans are going to like max out all the stuff that they can spend these on pretty quickly. Like that's my my guess at least right now because they're going to upgrade all their perks and then be like, well, I've got a billion crystals. What do I do next? <laughs> but that's that's good. That's really good. That's really... Oh. I told you guys. I told you there'd be a ping system. We're bringing a locational ping to zombies players. This will function the same way it does in the Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, activated by pressing D-pad left on controllers and Z on keyboards by default. Whether you're marking the next door, you need a friend to open, pointing out the pap, 
to a first timer or pinging the location of the mystery box, we think this feature brings a huge QOL improvement to Black Ops Zombies players. Love it, Treyarch. Love it. Don't forget your treats. You didn't think we'd leave you empty handed for Halloween, did you? We've got even more zombies goodies to share. Oh, okay. The theme that we've been listening to for the whole video. So that's that. This chilling masterpiece was composed by Kevin Sherwood. Yes, he's still at the studio. That's such good news. Additional arrangement by James McCauley. Yes, he's still at the studio. And mixing and mastering by Ryan, sorry, Ryan Garigliano. Turn, off the, turn the lights off, put your headphones on, play it loud. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we've got the Nuclear Family calling card. I'll have the code for that in the description so you can activate that on Pawntex Pawn yourself, guys. The calling card was created to commemorate the community's role in helping to solve the maze of secrets. I'm glad Pawntex Pawn is wrapped up now. That's good stuff. They've released this cosplay guide, so you can cosplay as Samantha if you want. It actually says, by the way, by the way, it says Samantha is no nonsense. Hello? Marry me? Actually, though... Here's your ring, Samantha. Oh, I swear to God, dude. <laughs> She's no nonsense. It's amazing. Okay, I'm getting carried away. Uh, they've also released a Zombies fan kit with just some downloads of some Zombies assets, basically. Samantha Max is confirmed. You might not have been keeping closer... Uh, uh, you, wait. Oh, if you weren't sure before this week, you might not have been keeping a close eye on the telephone keypad. Yep, so they're just confirming what we did already know. There's the Zombies fan kit. Happy Halloween. Treyarch, I love you. I love you. This is so exciting. This is so much good news. And it's not over. Because, because, on this page... Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't want that. On this page, they've got a couple of gifts just to hammer home some of these things. So they've got the perks to crack open at launch. They've got elemental pop. They're talking about the attachments. I'm just going to make sure that we've actually covered everything here. Uh, good balance of offensive, defensive. Exfil. Yep. Okay. Maybe they. Maybe we did cover it all after all. Okay. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Mr. Waffle Waffles. I'm so excited. If you're excited too, then please, please leave a like on the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.